In this tutorial, we will be discussing bond energies and lattice energies. Chemical reactions involve the breaking of bonds in reactant molecules and making new bonds to create the products. The delta H of the reaction, which is the energy of the reaction, the enthalpy, can be estimated by comparing the cost of breaking old bonds to the profit from making new bonds. The amount of energy it takes to break one mole of a bond is called the bond energy. The, the more electrons involved in, in this bond, the more electrons between the two atoms, the stronger the covalent bond. For instance, carbon-carbon triple bond is far stronger than a carbon-carbon single bond. And that's referring to if we were to break all three of these bonds at once, it would create a lot of energy. Also, the shorter the covalent bond, the stronger the bond. Fluorine is a smaller atom, so when it's bonded to bromine, it actually has more energy than when bromine is bonded to itself because bromine is bigger. Bond energies are measured by the energy required to break a bond. The greater the number of bonds, which is also called the bond order, the higher the bond strength and the, str and the shorter the bond, the higher the bond strength. So let's look at the length of the bond. Bond length is the distance between the nuclei of the two atoms involved. So we're talking about the center of the atom when we're measuring the bond length. It's dependent its length is dependent on the size of the atom, which is also measured in angstroms. A lot of times you'll see a little circle on top of that A as part of the abbreviation. It's also dependent on the electronegativity of the atoms in the bond and the number of electrons between the atoms. For instance, multiple bonds. If we were comparing single, double to triple, triple is smaller than a single bond. So how do we use these energy, these bond energies to determine the amount of energy in an actual reaction? The net energy is equal to the delta H of the reaction, which is the enthalpy, once again. Delta H of a reaction can be calculated using this equation. The bonds broken added to the bonds formed. However, when we're forming bonds, that's going to be a negative because it releases energy because the, the atoms are becoming more stable. So it's really like saying the bonds broken, which are the reactants, minus the bonds formed, which are the products. And remember, this minus here is all because of it being negative. So breaking bonds requires energy to do so. So we use a positive value of the bond energies. Making bond releases energy, so therefore we use the negative value of those bond energies. The breakage of weak bonds in the formation of stronger bonds gives you an exothermic reaction. That's because this number over here, the bonds formed, are going to be higher. Breaking strong bonds to form weak bonds is an endothermic reaction because that number that you're forming is going to be smaller. So let's put this into action. Let's say we have CH4 and we're reacting it with Cl2. First thing we have to do is break the bonds. So we're taking a hydrogen off of it. We're breaking one of those CH bonds. Whenever you do these, you essentially have to write out the Lewis dot structure so that you can visualize what's going on and what kind of bonds are there. We're going to be breaking one of these CH bonds and the hydrogen is going to come off. In the process, we also have to break the CLCL bond. And that's why it's separated up here. It took energy to have that happen. Now what's going to happen here is this H is going to find its way over to the CL to bond itself. And then the Cl here is going to find its way over to the carbon, which is why it's here. So let's put this in action. 
So we have CH4 plus Cl2 yields HCl and CH3Cl. There's a couple different ways of doing it. We can do just like we did here where we only broke the one bond that was being broken and formed. We can look at that. So let's take a look. CH4 and Cl2 is reacting to form HCl and CH3Cl. So if we compare these two equations, this is different, this is different, this is different, and this is different. So those are the bonds that are forming and breaking. So it's the reactants minus the product. So we have a CH bond here, which is right here. And we have a CL bond, CLCL bond here, which is 242, minus the products, which is an HCL bond, which is here, 432, and a CCL bond, which is down here, 339. If you, if you add and subtract that out, it comes out to be negative 5, 115. There's another way you can do this. It takes a little bit more work, but it might be worth it. You could add up all the bonds total. So we have four CH bonds, which is 414. We have the 242 from the CL, CL, and then minus HCL again. And then we have three CH bonds, which is 414, and we have one CL, CCL bond. The only difference between these two equations is the fact that in the first one, I didn't count in the three bonds that remained that didn't do anything different because they're there at the beginning and then they're at the end. So if they're on both, if they're being added and then subtracted, it's not going to affect the final number. It all depends on how comfortable you feel with determining which ones are for breaking and which ones are forming. If you feel uncomfortable to be able to predict that, you might be better off to determine all the bond energies and just do all the bond energies at the beginning and all, minus all the bond energies at the end. That's totally your choice. So let's take a look at lattice energy now. Lattice energy is specifically for ionic compounds. The ions are arranged in a, ions in general, when they're in a compound, are arranged in a pattern called a crystal lattice. A crystal lattice maximizes the attraction between the cations and anions, leading to the most stable arrangement. These tend to be much more stable than the, or the, covalent bonds we just saw. The extra stability that accompanies the formation of the crystal lattice is measured as the lattice energy. Notice it's a bond energy is now called lattice energy with ionic compounds. Lattice energy is, is released when the solid crystals form from separate ions in a gas state. Notice in this picture the ions are separating out and that's the amount of energy that they're trying to figure out it takes. It's always exothermic and it's difficult to measure directly but can be calculated from knowledge of other processes. It depends directly on the size of the charges and inversely to the distance between the ions. We're going to talk about that a little more. The attraction force between the charged particles is inversely proportional to the distance between them. So, the closer it is, the closer they are, the stronger that bond is going to be, stronger that energy. So what this statement is saying here is as the distance, as the length between them goes down, the energy will go up, the energy will increase. The larger ion means that the 
center of the positive charge, which is the nucleus of the cation, is farther away from the negative charge, the electrons of the anion. The larger ion means that there's a weaker attraction because they're further apart. The weaker attraction means that there's a smaller lattice energy. So for instance, if we look at the periodic table, we know that ions get bigger as you go left and down. So lithium is here, then sodium, then potassium, and then cesium. The atoms are getting bigger as you go down. So that's what this is comparing to, lithium, sodium, potassium, and cesium. 241, 276, 314, 348. So you see how the, the pattern is that it's getting bigger. The energy is getting to be smaller numbers. It's still going to be negative because it's exothermic. However, it's going to be less energy being given off, the actual magnitude of it. And that is lattice energy and bond energies.